Hi everyone and welcome to Season 10, Episode 3 of From Hope to Glory at Truro City with me, the United City FM. Welcome along. So, big game today in the English Championship. My Truro City side take on Aston Villa. That's first versus third in the Championship. And just to let you know, Villa ain't first. Ooh. Welcome back to Truro City. And yes, the rumours are true. Sitting top of the championship after 14 matches played for everybody in the division, Truro City are at the very top. Bristol City just behind us on goal difference and then two points behind today's opponents in Aston Villa. It is going phenomenally well so far this season. You can see that we're right up there in terms of goal difference. Goal scored, we're doing brilliantly well. And 11 isn't too bad out of 14 matches for us either. So overall, I'm absolutely ecstatic by how things are going. If, if in any way we drop off from this point onwards, as long as we now fi uh, finish somewhere in the playoffs, that is a huge step forward for us. Obviously, I'd like to get automatic promotion and go and feel some of that Premier League money, you know. But uh, ultimately, we finished in 10th last season. Uh, so this is a huge step up and we're doing brilliantly well. But today it's going to be a really, really tricky game. Aston Villa were firm favourites to win the division at the start of the season. They're just building a little bit of momentum, which is good. Um, but yeah, today, <clears throat> excuse me, we come up against a very tricky side. So before we go and check out uh, what we're going to be up to today for Villa, let's go and see what's happened most recently. So what the recent schedule shows us is that we've been winning games by a goal margin quite recently, which has been very positive. It hasn't really opened up the floodgates, but we've been getting points where maybe sometimes we wouldn't have thought we would have got some. So 3-2 against Preston, 1-0 and 1-0 against Swansea and Norwich. Both really positive results at this point in the season. But today against Villa at Villa Park, it's going to be a whole different ball game, isn't it? So uh, it's going to be a tricky one, but you can see all the way through the season... We've been doing pretty well, losing the odd game. We did lose to Middlesbrough in the last round of fixtures since you and I were together last, where we got that one-all draw against Leeds United. Uh, so you can see that occasionally we come up against a bit of a stumbling block, but the losses that we've had so far, one in the cup against Reading, one against Blackburn and one against Middlesbrough, have all been real narrow margins in terms of how we've lost. So there's a lot of positivities going on here, really. And in the lead up to coming up to the calendar, uh, end of the calendar year and then beginning the January transfer window, we are looking in fantastic shape. That is um, until we come up against Villa, as I say. Who knows what's going to happen today? I have no expectations. If we were to win it, it's amazing. If we were to lose it, it's kind of not the end of the world because of who they are and where they're predicted to finish in the league. So let's get into this game and see how we get on against Villa at Villa Park. So sometimes when we come up against these big sides in a division, we put out our absolute full strength squad, whatever their situation is really, and just try and be the best that we can be. Today, not quite so much. We've got a couple of injury issues that I am taking out of the starting lineup and out of the squad a little bit, just because I do feel that whatever happens against Villa isn't really going to define our season particularly. They are supposed to be winning this division. Uh, if they beat us today, that's fair enough. One of those things. We are going to give it as good a go as we can. But ultimately, the likes of Herbie Kane, Thompson, Smith and Ibrahim are all out because I don't need to risk them. This is a, a bit of a free game for us, really. So we're going to uh, just rotate the squad just a very small amount and just see if we can get away with one here and potentially... Maybe take a draw, we'll see. Uh, but for today's game against Aston Villa, we've got Mbeu in goal, Fink at right back, Fenn at left back, Reddy and McCann in central defence, Adeniran, Williams and White in central midfield, Wright Phillips on the right, Apoku on the left, Abu Bakar up top with a bench of Archer, Clark, Sarula, Barry, Chiwunga, Sarmiento and Battersby. So let's get into today's game and see what happens.
In terms of team talk, I've gone very chilled out, hands in the pockets. This is a great opportunity to show the pundits if they've been right to back you. Just give them a chance to go out and play a game really under not too much pressure, but enough just to say, let's go and give a good account of ourselves and see how well we can do. We are underdogs here. We are second favourites, but we can absolutely pull off an upset if we show up and play our game to the best of our abilities. So let's see if we can do it. A minute into the game, we get the first highlight for us down the right-hand side, and we get the first goal for us from the right hand side it's right Phillips down the right hand side who runs right the way to the byline um, which was a phenomenal run loses a, a midfielder at this point and who regains his position but then it gets himself a yard of space eventually hooks the cross in and Abu Bakar sitting top of the six yard box just has to wait for the ball to come to him a perfectly delivered ball and he powers the ball into the back of the net from close range and we go one up after a couple of minutes of play, which is fantastic, a really unexpected lead, but this is exactly what we were hoping for, to prove that we should be in the conversation for this top of the league stuff. Um, and so far in this match, we are doing ourselves the world of good. Uh, we're now 15 minutes in, just over, and Villa haven't really done too much so far. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've got a, a decent XG rating, but at this point, we really shouldn't have the goal because of the X, uh, what the XG rating says, but we'll take it. It's fine. We've got a, a bit of an issue for Abu Bakar coming up. It looks like that he's going to be struggling with some um, match sharpness and, and conditioning a little bit later in the game. Some information came up on the screen to let me know that. So we'll have to watch out for him probably at half time and see whether we need to change him out or not. But now it's Villa's chance to build up an attack through the centre. They've gone out wide left. We've kept uh, a reasonable shape, but they've managed to drift past the midfield and get a chance at goal. Um, uh, Bayou eventually manages to parry the ball and we do tidy it up so it doesn't go out for the corner kick or anything, which is pretty decent, to be honest. And we'll just have to see whether we can get in at half time with this one goal advantage. They've now had more shots than we've had at goal, uh, but we've still got a little bit more possession. So we're holding our own. But it hasn't been quite as um, energised and dominant uh, after those first couple of minutes since then, really. And it's Villa now getting back in the game quite considerably. They get another chance to cross the ball in. They've drifted it back out to the top of the box. Eventually, White gets a foot in. And that was brilliant play by him. And eventually, Abu Bakar drops it back to Wright Phillips. So we do keep the ball nicely. And again, he's down at the, by uh, the byline. But this time... They get a foot in and they get a chance to counter-attack. And they do so very quickly down the left-hand side. They ride a challenge there, get to the edge of the box and then into the box. And of course it happens. We're going to shoot ourselves in the foot and Reddy dives in, causes the foul and gives a penalty to Villa. And they convert it with no problems whatsoever. And we have done ourselves in when if we could have just stood firm for those last couple of seconds before the end of the first half, we would have had a really different type of team talk to give at half-time. But as it stands, we're now at 1-1, and there is the half-time whistle. It was so close to being a half-time 1-0 lead. We didn't quite manage it because of that unfortunate um, penalty kick that was given away. I say unfortunate, it was a silly penalty kick to give away. He should have just... Um, continue to make a run with his man and, and and sort of hurry him out of the pitch really but he didn't and that's just the way it works sometimes so we're going to have to go in and do something a little bit more um, about this rather than being the outstretched arms and positive we're still going to have to remain in this kind of chilled out middle ground I don't want to thrash the arms or point the finger I think we'll go hands together and say, um, unlucky, no, we're going to say we're not doing badly at all. If everyone continues to work hard, we'll win this. And I think that's possible, but they have to work hard for it. So we're going to send them straight back out and into the shouts and demand more from them. Um, and we're still getting a few uh, issues with Abu Bakar potentially uh, not being able to see this game through. But just at the moment, he's doing okay. And there is a really good chance. A good um, uh, cross came in from Fenn down this left-hand side. And Wright Phillips at the far post got enough on it to suggest that he could have had a better attempt. And it went sailing over the top of the bar, unfortunately. But at 60 minutes, we're just coming up to 60 minutes. We are still at 1-1. Um, and we are still competing very, very nicely. 
It must be said that, you know, Villa have now definitely had more chances and better chances. Their XG rating has gone sky high comparative to ours, but we're doing okay. At 70 minutes, we're just about to see a highlight. So I will that allow that to play off uh, before we make a couple of personnel changes and just rest a few players and get some uh, better energy into it. And it's Villa who get a chance over the back, uh, over the top, should I say, but Reddy makes up for his initial issue that he caused the penalty and stops them. And then we get a chance for Abu Bakar and it gets parried narrowly wide. They were very lucky there that we almost took a 2-1 lead. Apoku with the corner kick comes in and Villa get it cleared and well cleared. They get their runner on the ball from the edge of the box and they make it down to the other end of the pitch and then oh, ultimately it comes a bit of a cropper. But 73 minutes in, we are going to pause the game there and we are going to go and make a couple of changes um, and just see what's um, the situation with some of our players. Uh, so, what I can tell you is that all the way through the match, Abu Bakar has been suggested that we might need to remove him, but he's performing much better than need be uh, in terms of his conditioning as well as his match performance. So, he's not going anywhere. Uh, we've got one or two issues, though. Uh, we've got uh, a bit of nervousness from Williams in the middle of the pitch, and we've got a little bit um, of some low conditioning comparatively in some of our wide areas. So those are the sorts of things we might need to be thinking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Williams out and we're going to put Barry in. Um, I don't know if you've seen too much of Barry this season. He's been a very bit part player so far. But Daniel Barry, uh, 20 years old, he's going to get a chance here to come and play in one of the bigger games of the season and see what he can do. So he comes into the starting line, uh, the, uh, the finishing lineup, should I say, really, of this particular match. We're also going to bring Sarmiento in down that left hand side for Apoku just to get fresh legs there, really. And we can make one other change, and I think it's going to be in one of these fullback positions. And I think on this occasion, we're going to take out Fink and put in Darnell Clark again, just for a little bit of fresh legs down that side. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're not going to change the way that we're playing. We might actually bump it up into um, uh, a more attacking uh, mentality just for the last couple of minutes. But we'll wait just a little bit for that. We're going to go into the shouts, fire them up for the last few minutes of the match. See if that can just push us into something extra than we were going to give anyway. And now for the last few minutes, we will go into the attacking mentality. Can we get anything from this game in terms of a, 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 an extra couple of points by just pushing at the last? We can't. But we get a really very good 1-1 draw away from home at the favourites for this particular season's championship. So I'm absolutely delighted with that. I think we competed really well, showed how we are at the top of the table. It might have dropped us off the top spot, potentially, depending on what Bristol have been doing uh, in this round of fixtures. But that's OK, because the expectation for me is not that we necessarily win the title this, uh, this season. It's just pushing for one of those playoff spots, really. And so far, we're getting there. So we can see if we look at the table, we have dropped down a position into second position. But to be honest, that's absolutely fine with me. You can see that we have got a, a very, very small gap just beginning to open up between us and the um, Fulham who sit in fifth position. And if our intention now is to get into these playoffs, that's the kind of gap that we need to open up. If we can keep that um, between us and them, between uh, about six points, for the next few weeks, then potentially we're putting ourselves in a very good position to get one of these playoff spots. And that's now the challenge for this season. Having reached the top of the table and held it briefly, can we now go above and beyond what potentially we expected to for this season and get in those playoffs? That's the challenge. Of course, if we can do better than that and stay in one of these automatic spots for promotion, then mind blown, basically, that would be insane. Um, and whatever happens in the Premier League at this point, should we get there, it would just reset the club completely for the financial impact alone. So we'll have to see what happens with all of this. But actually, at the moment, it's just going brilliantly well. So what's coming up next? Well, we are going to be in the lead up um, to the end of the calendar year just before we head into the January window. So that is what we're going to come back for. The last game of the of the calendar year for end of December, we're going to play Coventry away from home. And then after that, it will be the following episode. We'll be coming back 
in the early part of February so I can update you on anything that happens in the January transfer window. I don't know whether anything will happen there just at the moment. We haven't got too much money. We've got a little bit and a fair amount of wages to play about with. So we could do one or two deals if the right deals came up. But that's for another day. <clears throat> for today, it was all about getting a result, if we could, against Villa. And to come away with a point away from home... I think was pretty special. So come back and join me next episode for that Coventry match just before we go into the January transfer window and I'll update you on quite a few games that I've got to play in between now and then and see where that leaves us in the table. But so far so good is the 15 match point uh, of this particular season report. What a snazzy title for report. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. Thank you for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and join my United City community. The more the merrier. Click that like button on this particular episode. That'll help us get seen by lots more people. Until next time, though, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.